Hi everyone. Uh, so my name is Sophie. I'm a developer at John Lewis, uh, famous for our sh uh, Christmas adverts and sometimes also for shops. Um, I'm going to give a talk that is a bit of a meta talk. It's a talk about talks. Um, so this, just for some background, this was me in March. Um, I gave my first ever conference talk at React Fest, still, you know, riding the wave of glory that came after that. Um, so, uh, there were, yeah, my first ever talk, I was absolutely bricking it, no idea what I was doing. So, I kind of thought, who am I going to ask for help with this? I don't know what I'm going to put in my talk. So, I asked Twitter. <laughs> yeah. um, so I followed quite a lot of cool people on Twitter and um, so I asked them, people who have spoken at conferences before, what is one thing that you wish you'd known um, before you did your first conference talk? And it was quite a popular post, I had to turn notifications off for Twitter, uh, that was an interesting day, but the, 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 the feedback and the tips I got were so handy that I just kind of put them all together and I wanted to share them because I feel like these this advice is just too good to keep to myself and it really helped me. So I hope that it encourages people to uh, do some talks yourself, um, especially like we need more women on the conference scene um, and just um, I hope that it um, encourages you to, to have a go. So I'm gonna take you through the whole process from coming up with a talk, uh, which full disclosure, I am terrible at, um, all the way through to the big day itself. So talking about putting it together, um, practicing and dealing with technology, which is always fun. So yeah, thinking of an idea is the most difficult thing. Um, honestly, like it, it depends what you're doing, what you're working on. Um, but a couple of tips I've had from, from people in, in the tech industry have been quite useful. So this is Sarah. You may know her from various conferences and she actually works for YLD as well. Um, I love this so much. Conference driven development. So uh, you look up something you want to learn, you submit a talk, and when you get accepted, you cry because then you have to learn the thing, and then you learn the thing and do the talk. So this is like, I guess this is a, a talk idea for people who like to live on the edge. Uh, <laughs> so maybe, you, I don't know, comb through the Mozilla web APIs and look for the weirdest one and submit a talk about it, and then you have to learn how to use it. So like, maybe not, not for the faint-hearted. But one that I prefer, and one that actually worked for me, was um, a tip by Yanni, uh, who you may recognise from also from the conference circuit. Um, he, so it's often like you're having a conversation with someone, and you'll mention something that you're using, um, and they'll be like, "What? What is that?" And um, you say, "Oh, I thought everyone knew about that." Well, that's a talk. So for me, I did a talk about Redux Saga, which is a library for Redux. Um, I thought it was the, my first React project. I thought that was just what everyone used. Turns out it's not. My colleague who I was working with said, I've literally never used this before, so you should do a talk about it. So I did a talk about it. Um, so your usual talks, you've got your lightning talks, which are like between five or 10 minutes, and the full length talks tend to be about 20 to 30. Any longer, people tend to stop listening. Um, but those are your kind of uh, average talk lengths. Um, so lightning talk's probably a really good place to start for your first talk. So you've got your talk idea, maybe you've got accepted your first conference, what about putting it together? Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, so if it's a conference that cares about its speakers, it'll offer you a mentor. So I was uh, given the help of the lovely Sara Vieira, who uh, went for React Fest, so she um, helped me run through it. Um, I also did a Skype run through with my colleagues, so ask your colleagues for help, ask on Twitter like I did, you'd be amazed what kind of amazing advice you'll get from that. Um, and use your professional network, so all of the people in this room constitute a really great professional network. People you know at work, people you've worked with in the past, friends in the industry, use every connection that you can. And uh, choose the technology you're going to use to put your slides together, which may seem like an obvious choice, but actually everyone has a personal preference. So I like Keynote, um, you might like Google Slides, which is great for sharing slides, uh, PowerPoint. If you're a real big nerd, you'll like Reveal or Spectacle, which are two uh, JavaScript uh, slide frameworks 
They're really good for putting code in, but I just couldn't be bothered and I like Kilo. <laughs> Readability is really important. So when you're writing your slides, use large text, clear fonts, make sure it's high contrast, and use colour carefully. So for example, don't use two colours next to each other to distinguish information, because some people might not be able to see those colours or see the differences between them. And tell a story in your slides. So um, rather than just like a list of facts or something, go from, you know, have a journey. So I'm taking you through from com coming up with your, sto uh, your slides all the way through to actually delivering the talk. So you want some kind of progression which kind of keeps the audience interested. And um, Dan Abramov, for it is he, says, like an inception, <laughs> what is the one idea that you want to put into their heads? So have your one idea, and that really helps you if you actually need to cut something. If you realise, oh god, my slide's too long, I need to cut something out. What can I cut without getting rid of that one concept that I want to keep in my slides? Don't put too much text on your slides. You don't want to distract the audience. You don't want them to be sitting there reading while you're trying to get your point across. So keep your points concise, talk around them, and you can always share another version of your slides later that has more details on it. Avoid too many animated things. GIFs are so much fun, we all know this. But don't flood your presentation with them because no one will be paying attention to anything except the dogs. Another thing, um, try not to put too much code on. Oh, that's very slow, isn't it? OK, so the less code you show, the better. Um, sometimes you can't really get your point across without showing a bit of code. But see if you can get the more technical concepts across without just lines and lines of code. If you need to, put links to your code somewhere else, like on the internet or GitHub, and keep the links in the presentation so that people can visit them afterwards. Um, so for my Redux slide talk, I had to use quite a lot of code because I was basically demonstrating how they work. But I think in retrospect, I probably could have used a bit less because really the last thing you want to see when you're watching a talk is just lines of code. And actually, this is where Spectacle, the slide framework, comes in to its own. It's got this really cool plugin where you can actually go through your code line by line. But that does require learning how to use it, which I did not have time for. <laughs> so you've written your slides. They're amazing. And now it's time to practice. Practice. Please practice your talk. Um, and it's not just what you say, but it's also how you say it. So think about the way that you're going to deliver your talk. Don't just kind of list out information. You know, make the odd joke, but nothing rude. And for the love of God, nothing offensive. It's not cool. Get a feel for the timings of your slides, so um, when you're running it through with someone, do have a timer on to see how long you're actually going for. And try out your talk at meetups like this one. So I did a kind of, uh, I did a preemptive version of my saga talk at React Girls in uh, December. So like, React Girls is a fantastic place for your first talk, it's just such a welcoming and lovely audience, so I really recommend that. And at work as well, it'll make you look great in front of your colleagues for one thing and um, it's just a really, you've got a captive audience, basically. And yeah, speak naturally. Don't be tempted to, sc uh, to script your talk, because you may think, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to say, I'm going to put some great jokes in, but ultimately if you're reading off the script, it's going to sound really unnatural, so make sure that you kind of know your points well enough so you can just talk freely. And yeah, the importance of practicing, according to Yanni, rehearse three times, so first on your own, then um, with some friends, with some colleagues, and then on a, a local meetup. And then by then you'll have it absolutely nailed. So I actually practiced my talk with my partner, who is not at all technical, but the feedback that I got from him was really, like, really helpful to do with the way that I delivered the talk and the kind of contents of the slides, not from a technical point of view, but from the way that I presented it. So don't underestimate um, forcing people to watch who don't necessarily know uh, sorry, did I say forcing? <laughs> um, no, don't underestimate the, the kind of benefit of people who don't necessarily know the subject matter because they're coming at it from a totally different perspective. And Dan, again, if you haven't practiced your talk, you will run over. So he said he did his first talk, and it was I think it was 30 minutes, and he only got through like half of the slides. 
So it's really important to practice and make sure you know how long you're going for. Right, so you've practiced, you've got it all down. Uh, it's time for arguably the hardest bit, which is getting the technology to work. So, don't trust the Wi-Fi. Don't assume that it's going to work. If there's a lot of you there um, at this conference, the Wi-Fi, the network might be completely overloaded. That's happened to me before. Um, so make sure you're not relying on the internet. I mean, if you've got a phone with a reliable tethering, that's perfect, but you might not have signal. So make sure you've downloaded anything that you need. You've got offline versions of anything you need. Um, keep a backup as well. So, uh, for example, you might have to use someone else's computer. Uh, if one of the adapters doesn't work or if something fails, um, keep it on a memory stick. Keep a backup of your backup and a backup of that backup. And yeah, but ask about the tech setup before you come um, or if you arrive early, just have a look around, test out your equipment before the talk. Just make sure everything is working and you know exactly what to expect. And bring an adapter as well. Um, so if you've got a weird MacBook or something, especially one of those USB-C ones that has like one port, bring an adapter so you know that you're covered. Um, and a clicker as well. This was like six pounds from Amazon and it's like cheap rubbish, but it has just saved my ass so many times, so I recommend it. And you look really cool. <laughs> so, the big question is, to demo or not to demo? That is the question. Uh, <laughs> this is a big one because obviously, it's great to show off your skills and have a really cool demo that does amazing things and I'm really excited to see what Kimberly has got for us in a minute. <laughs> but I've also seen a fair share of demos that just haven't worked because the Wi-Fi sucked. Uh, there was a, a one and a half stack last year that was really cool but it was like, it required Bluetooth and there was so much interference from people's phones around that it just didn't work. Um, so, it's, it's, I guess it's a gamble because you've got to decide, am I sure this demo is going to work? But Queen Sarah Drasner has a backup, and that is record yourself doing your demo beforehand. So she takes screen captures, like screencasts of her actually doing the thing that she wants to demo. But the best thing about that is then she can talk over it. So while you're watching her talk, she's playing a video of whatever it is she wants to demo that's not live. But because it's not live, she can actually describe what's going on in the video as she's doing it. And it is really good. So I think that's actually a really great way of making sure that your demo is going to work um, without actually having to do it live. Right, so we've got there. It's the big day. Make sure you're wearing the right clothes. So, something with a waistband for the battery pack that you're inevitably going to have to put on. Um, comfy shoes and something with a collar. Nothing too low cut, not because it's rude, but just because your mic's going to be like a meter away from your mouth. So, you need to kind of prepare for every eventuality. So, sensible clothing. Um, I guess the dress code varies from conference to conference. Most of the tech ones I've been to have been pretty much just jeans and t-shirts, but I guess it depends on your industry as well. Um, and also the, the kind of mics you might be asked to wear differ, so I've got a handheld one now, I've got a clip on one for the camera, and um, at React Fest we had like Britney mics, which was kind of awesome. But <laughs> And um, when you're giving your talk, don't forget to stay hydrated, so take some water on stage with you, and they should offer that anyway. Um, and you can actually like um, you can plan in even when you're gonna when you're gonna drink water which actually gives you a nice opportunity to breathe and take a break um, take off any kind of dangly jewelry any lanyards because they will rattle and make a noise in the microphone turn off your notifications obvious and uh, yeah I think you're gonna be fine but seriously um, <laughs> If you've got an Apple Watch, if you've got a phone in your pocket, if you've got anything that has notifications on it, just turn them off. People are going to be tweeting about your talk because that always happens and it's probably me and I'm probably sending like 47 tweets about how great your talk is because I'm that person. But um, if you've got notifications turned on, it's just going to bug you the whole way through. And another one um, about if you're being scared about giving the talk, um, it's it's re well, it is really nerve-wracking going on stage and think, oh God, I'm next, oh God, I'm next. But I mean, I don't speak for everyone, but my personal experience was as soon as I got on the stage, my nerves just dissipated and I was just there and I was like, I've practiced this. I know what I'm talking about. This is really exciting. 
And some really good, um, really good kind of tip I got recently actually was that it's actually the same chemicals in, in the same kind of system in the brain um, creates the feelings for um, nervousness as for excitement. So just tell yourself you're just excited and keep telling yourself that. And actually, it sounds really stupid, but you will start to believe it. <laughs> the brain is a mysterious organ. Um, and actually, my completely unofficial and dreadful tip is, um, <laughs> as you're about to go on stage, think of the scariest thing that's ever happened to you. So I was rem remembering at the time that on a work team building trip, I went on a zip wire. I'm terrified of heights. It was horrendous, and I will never do it again. This was not as bad as going on a zip wire. <laughs> so I thought, oh yeah, I can totally do this. So yeah, don't forget to breathe um, and take sips of water, plan it in, take a break, um, move around. You don't have to be stuck behind the podium um, and, and slow down. You don't have to speak at a million miles a minute. Um, the more you practice, the easier this will get. And if you're not a confident person, just pretend you are, no one knows. Um, so if, you've got, if you're enthusiastic about what you're speaking about, which I hope you are because you're speaking about it, uh, the audience will catch that from you. Um, so just look like you're having fun, even if you're not. Um, and if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter, just keep going. Yeah, so you won't, you won't notice, uh, the audience won't notice your mistakes. They don't know what's in your talk. They don't know the contents. They don't know the order of the slides. They don't know exactly what you'd plan to say or the absolutely hilarious joke that you completely forgot about. So um, just, just keep going and no one will notice a thing. And if, if you do make a mistake or say something that's completely wrong, you can just correct yourself and move on. Like, the audience are on your side. They don't want you to fail. I really like these. I like them so much I went over them. <laughs> so the audience are there because they like the subject, right? They came to your talk because they were interested to hear what you had to say. They're not going to sit there and throw rotten tomatoes at you. They are genuinely excited to see what you have to say. And so they are supportive. And your enthusiasm will become their enthusiasm if you deliver your talk in a way that is engaging and that you prove that you enjoy what you're talking about. What about questions? This is quite a nerve-wracking part of a talk because you might think, oh God, I don't want to be put on the spot. What if I don't know the answer? Well, if you do get questions, make sure you repeat that question to the audience. For one thing, if you're being filmed, no one on the camera is going to be able to hear what's being asked of you. Um, but also other people in the audience might not have heard the question. And it's okay to say you don't know the answer. Maybe you could say something like, I'm not sure about the answer to that one. I can, I'll take that away and have a look and, and I'll get back to you. Or just even invite someone in the audience to answer. Just say, I don't actually know the answer to that one. Maybe if someone else does here, they could answer that for you. Also a great way to get out of answering questions. <laughs> and you don't have to take questions at the end. So at React Fest, they actually didn't have questions after the talk, which I was quite glad about. Um, and they encourage people to come up to you at the end of the talk and ask questions that way instead, which is a lot less intimidating. And if anyone is difficult, which I hope they're not, um, if someone ever asks you, like, oh, why would you do that that way? Like, this is so much better. Just say, seemed like a good idea at the time. Next. I'd like to say a big thank you to all of these people and many more who answered my tweet plea and gave me this amazing, amazing advice which really helped me and I hope it really helps you as well. Thank you very much. So um, I'm on Twitter, there's a blog version of this talk on Medium um, and there's these amazing resources, so Karina Sur I can't, <laughs> has written how to write a successful conference proposal which is an absolutely invaluable guide. And also, Joe Franchetti has some fantastic tips for public speaking. So, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, how much of your talk do you prepare before you get accepted, usually? So the question was, how much of a talk do you prepare before you get accepted? Um, so usually for your average kind of call for papers, as they're called, which is the thing that you fill out when you apply for a conference, they'll ask you for the title of your talk and a brief description. So it can range from like one paragraph to a couple of, a few paragraphs, but 
If you think about how many proposals they get for a conference, they don't want you to write absolutely loads. Um, they might ask you how technical your talk is or whether you want to do a long or a short talk. Um, but generally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write too much of a talk before submitting and um, before getting accepted, basically. Just a couple of paragraphs. Anyone else? Yes. So let's imagine you have a demo and something goes wrong. So how do you actually switch to the second plan without saying, oh, I swear it's just recommended? So the question was how to switch to the backup plan if the demo goes wrong. I think have it in the background, ready to go. Um, so you might have, if you've got a video, have a link to it or have it open in the background of your slides. Make a joke about it. Everyone will find it funny because it's inevitable at some point that someone's demo will go wrong. And again, people are nice. People are there to support you, so they won't judge you if your demo doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, but, um, so I think just, just kind of prepare for every eventuality. Have it ready uh, just in case you do need it. Would I recommend screen, what rec screencast recording software would I recommend? I have used one on Mac called CAP, K-A-P. Uh, it's quite cool because you can use, you can make videos and like talk over them and you can also make GIFs. Um, that's the only one I've actually used, so uh, I have to recommend that because I have no other experience. Cool. If anyone else has any questions, please find me in the break. Thank you very much. Yeah.